This week, we stand on the threshold of Christmas Day, for it is the fourth week of Advent. We will gather with family and friends as best we can to celebrate again the birth of Jesus Christ. We will recognize and give thanks again that God so loved the world that he came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. God with us, Emmanuel, which is the title of this devotional. Let me read to you some scripture this, this day. First one comes from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, where the prophet says this. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you worry my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall call him Emmanuel. The second scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14 where the author says this, the, And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. As we look at the Isaiah passage in verse 14, the word Emmanuel was meant to convince King Ahaz that God would rescue him from his enemies. God asked Ahaz to ask him for a sign as proof of his promise, but the king refused. God then declared that he will go ahead and give him a sign anyway. The sign shows Ahaz that God is with him, whether he wants to recognize it or acknowledge it or not. And you see, that's true for us today as well. God is with us now and always, whether we acknowledge it or recognize it. It is our choice. But make no mistake, he came from heaven to earth to show us the way, as the song goes. He is here. He is with us. And as he eventually lived, died, and rose again, and then went back to heaven, he promised the Holy Spirit to come and be with us. He's always with us. Always loving us. As we look at the first chapter of John, it's about the Word again becoming flesh. The Word existed before he became flesh, before he became man. Through Jesus, we see the attributes and nature of God himself. The greatest gift ever given was the word becoming flesh and making his dwelling with us. This is a central truth of our Christian faith. The divine Christ became a man and dwelt temporarily among us. The God who dwelt in the Old Testament tabernacle now came as a human being. God's glory dwelt or tabernacled in the flesh, in human nature, in that person of Jesus, as did his grace, his redeeming love, forgiveness, and mercy, and the truth of his faithfulness by his word, by his promises given throughout the scriptures. These are available to all 
and they are exhaustless. God's grace upon grace, his forgiveness upon forgiveness, his mercy upon mercy, all of it being a fulfillment of the law of Moses. In John 14, we see that Jesus is comforting his disciples. This long discourse that starts in 14 and goes through 17 is the last for Jesus as he teaches them before his arrest. And let me read to you just a part of it. They're having a discussion, and Thomas asks in verse 14, If I can find it. Oh, 14 verse, I'm sorry, verse 5. I apologize for that. 14, 5. Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Well, Philip goes on to say to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus says to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. Throughout Jesus' ministry, the disciples and other witnesses beheld his divine glory in the miracles he performed, in his being lifted up on the cross, and again in the resurrection. They knew at least in their heads and eventually in their hearts, that God did indeed dwell among them through his son, Jesus Christ. The greatest gift ever came from God who loves us so much, and that gift is Jesus Christ. Now let me ask you a question for you to ponder this fourth week of Advent. If you had one gift to give to someone, what would it be, and to whom would you give it? Well, at Christmas time, a teacher in High Point, North Carolina, asked her class of fifth graders to answer this question. If you could give any gift you wanted to, what would you give, and to whom? And here are some of the responses. The gift I would like most to give would be love. It lasts forever and never grows dull. It could be given to anyone and to all. Another response is this. I would give a small orphan child friendship, fun, and a home where he could be happy. I would tell him never to be sad. Another response was this. I would give jobs and good homes to the poor and stop poverty all over the world. And finally, another one would be this. I would like to give happiness to the people that do not smile. Very profound answers from fifth graders. But how would you answer that question? Think about that. Think about what you would give. And remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish or die, but have eternal life. And God did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but to save it. You are a part of that world. In this fourth week of Advent, May you think about the greatest gift. May you know this greatest gift. May you share this greatest gift with all persons 
And may you and your family have a very merry and blessed Christmas. Amen and amen. <laughs>